As it stands right now, we could send a spacecraft deep into space at a whopping slow speed of 1500 kilometers a second. And that's pushing the limits of what we can do toward Alpha Centauri A. When this tiny massed spacecraft finally reaches the system, some 860 years later, only then could we look for another habitable planet up close and personal. Everyone knows NASA placed boots on the moon 50 years ago. By now you would think someone, perhaps NASA, would have developed and built more powerful and efficient engines. But no, that's not at all what has transpired. The truth is, back then as now, only a handful were or are interested in conquering space in a productive, beneficial way. Out of that handful, of the few who did strive to develop sound engine design concepts, some of which are not too bad, no one was interested in funding their development, let alone going into space. And as such, these smart scientists ended up pursuing other avenues of interest instead, which was a waste of great minds for space. In other words, propulsion development has been severely neglected for far too long. That's just not acceptable for us. So we decided to do something about it. Introducing the Muon Catalyze Anatronic Fusion Drive for deep space travel and exploration. This is the first phase of our engine development under Project AS via IRIS and International Research Institute for Space. Throughout 2021 onward, we will continue refining this concept until such time as we're ready to build it, and as such, additional videos will follow where and when we're able to. Our plan is to not only make use of our own engines, but to also market them for use as interplanetary propulsion units. A single muon catalyzed fusion driven spacecraft could theoretically reach speeds of at least 8% the speed of light, or even better. Our engine makes use of a new process recently discovered and tested by Professor Leif Homlid, the world's leading expert on Rydberg matter, which is an exotic state of matter involving extremely excited atoms with overlapping and shared electron shells. Within our engine, a small amount of deuterium is injected into the first chamber already containing a catalyst. Mere fractions of a second later, a tuned high-powered laser fires, exciting the deuterium gas, into the Rydberg state, while simultaneously evaporating some of the material and cooling the remainder, which then condenses on in the catalyst, becoming ultra-dense deuterium, or UDD for short. In a moment, we'll discuss in a little more detail what the Rydberg matter and UDD is. A second high-powered laser pulse ignites the UDD, releasing kaons, pions, muons, and neutrinos. Kaons and pions shortly decay into more muons. The resulting stream of muons are then guided into the fusion reaction chamber into an awaiting mass of deuterium, most likely slush, which was injected mere moments before. The now muonized deuterium begins fusing whilst a sophisticated and extremely powerful magnetic field trap contains the released neutrons with the aid of UDD. Something that's worthy of note here, fusion is achieved with nearly zero neutron emission upon startup. Once operating, no neutrons, at least that's the goal. The byproducts of the reaction is then allowed to exhaust in one direction, that is, out through the magnetic basket nozzle.
The idea behind this technique is, instead of detonating small nuclear charges as was proposed for the Orion and Daedalus, we can generate arbitrarily small fusion reactions, even as small and cold as the plasma in the Vasimir, which is about 10 million degrees, or hotter still and more energetic, meaning the design is easily scaled up or down. It is this process specifically that allows our engine to outperform nearly all nuclear engines. So, what type of craft do you think such an engine would be fitted to? Leave us your comments below. We think that our muon catalyzed fusion engine is ideal because it possesses both high thrust and high efficiency, which is exactly what is needed. Such engines are sometimes referred to as torch drives. Now, some have asked what's wrong with chemical engines. Current chemical engine technologies, whilst powerfully paving the way for near future space travel and the commercialization of space, are simply not efficient enough for deep space travel. Sure, someone may come along and advance the combustion process, such as SpaceX, but the laws of physics cannot be broken. There are limits to what a purely chemical process can do. So what about fission-driven spacecraft? Do I really need to remind you of what fission means? That's great if you don't mind dealing with radioactive parts of your ship, which will eventually allow the radioactivity to migrate toward the living quarters of your ship. No, this is not at all acceptable either. Rydberg matter is an exotic phase of matter formed by Rydberg atoms. A Rydberg atom is an excited atom with one or more electrons that have a very high excitation state. Professor Holmlid has discovered that, under the right conditions, deuterium can compress itself into an ultra-dense state. Dense enough, atoms are close enough, that the resulting material known as ultra-dense deuterium possesses a small chance of spontaneously annihilating. Working independently, renowned nuclear physicist Dr. Fredward Winterberg provided a mathematical description of how deuterium, when highly excited, can form into this ultra-dense state. Usually when an atom is excited, the orbiting cloud of electrons enlarges to a small degree, specifically, the smallest amount it can before becoming ionized. Further excitation causes the electron cloud to detach, now a free electron, ionizing the atom. With a Rydberg atom, the atom is excited repeatedly, using specifically tuned lasers or electron beams, each time given just enough energy to enlarge the electron cloud without ionizing the atom. If several atoms are excited together in this manner, we call the resulting new material Rydberg matter. If during the process the Rydberg matter is evaporated and therefore cools, it can condense on nearby surfaces, becoming a kind of Bose-Einstein condensate. A Bose-Einstein condensate, or Beck, is a strange state of matter where all the atoms of the material spread out as a wave. In other words, a Beck is a kind of coherent matter wave in one. If this occurs with deuterium, the resulting Beck material is called ultra-dense deuterium, or UDD. Due to the overlapping matter waves of the atoms, temporary particles, specifically quasi-neutrons and quasi-anti-neutrons, form between the deuterons within their matter waves. The quasi-neutrons and anti-neutrons are discrete quantized packets of energy that behave in many respects like real neutrons and anti-neutrons, and like real particles can annihilate and release their internal energies. 
This seemingly paradoxical behavior comes about as a result of the matter waves in which very short-lived particles, including the anti-quarks, can come into being, which permits the quasi-particles to behave very much like real particles. UDD annihilation produces gamma rays and charged particles called kaons, which shortly decay into muons. The new discovery therefore provides an efficient means of generating muons, which can in turn be used to heat deuterium gas to fusion or near fusion temperatures in a process called muon catalyzed fusion. Well there you have it, that is our engine design. There will be follow-up videos of other engines and our fusion reactor. As always, you know what I'm going to say. Keep wondering about space. Thank you.